Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one very nice question on medical imaging from May June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 1. In this question, we will talk about X-rays. We will discuss how X-rays can be produced and how we can calculate transmitted intensity when X-rays pass through one medium. We will also talk about transmitted intensity when X-rays pass through two different media. We will also discuss the main difference between X-rays and CT scan. At the end of this lesson, we will also talk about good contrast and poor contrast. And these are key concepts about X-rays. So listen carefully and try to improve your conceptual understanding of X-rays. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For question number nine, part A1, we need to explain how X-rays are produced. And this question is quite common in past papers. So let's Let's try to understand this one step by step. First of all, if you look at this image, you can see we have cathode here. As this cathode is heated using low voltage, electrons are released. So simply we can say in stage one, stage one cathode is heated. So simply you can say cathode is heated. As cathode is heated, electrons are released. We can simply write down electrons electrons released in this case electrons will be released and we use low voltage so you can also write down here in this case low voltage is used to release electrons from cathode as electrons are released you can see this is beam of electrons so these are electrons these dots are representing electrons and then these electrons they are accelerated using very high voltage so we can write here very high voltage very high voltage and the range of this voltage can be from 10 kilo volts to 120 kilo volts for medical use 10 to 120 kilo volts very high voltage as these electrons they will reach target tungsten target so this one is tungsten target they will hit this target and they will decelerate so second stage we can say stage two Electrons are accelerated. So simply you can say electrons are accelerated using high voltage. So simply we can say electrons are accelerated using high voltage, using high voltage. So this is the second stage. And in third stage, you will see electrons hit the target and decelerate. We can say electrons hit the target, tungsten target and decelerate, hit the target and decelerate decelerate so very important point electrons decelerate in state four we can say as electrons they decelerate the kinetic energy decreases state four kinetic energy of electrons decreases so the kinetic energy of electrons will decrease and this decreasing kinetic energy will be converted into x-rays it simply means that kinetic energy of electrons will be converted into x-rays this is how x-rays are produced these are x-rays so these x-rays are produced simply by decelerating accelerated electrons so this is the process you need to understand about production of x-rays now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer in a proper way this is how you can write down your answer if you have mentioned electrons are accelerated by an applied potential difference you will get one mark as electrons hit the target they will decelerate you will get another mark x-rays are produced so this is how you will get three different marks one mark here you will get this one is b mark and the second mark you will get if you have written electrons hit the target you will get second b mark and third b mark you will get if you have written x-rays are produced when electrons decelerate decelerate mean if you write down this you will get third mark this is how marks will be awarded for the second part we need to state why x-ray images are taken of multiple sections of the body during ct scan for this question we need to understand the difference between ct scan and x-ray in x-ray we can get 2d image but with the help of ct scan we can get 3d image of 
of any part of the body. In order to get 3D image, we need to take multiple images of multiple sections of that part of the body. And then we combine them to create 3D image. And that's the main difference. With the help of CT scan, we can get three dimensional image. We can rotate and we can view from different angles. So that's the reason when we go for x-ray, they will just do x-ray one time from one direction. But if you go for CT scan, they will repeat the process again and again to take multiple images of multiple section of the body. So that's the main difference between CT scan and x-rays. So let me show you how you can write down your answer. This question has only one mark. If you have written images of the multiple sections are combined to create a 3D image, you will get one mark. And this is B mark. For part B, it is given to us an X-ray image is taken of the structure shown in figure 9.1. Linear attenuation coefficient of bone is given and this one is equal to 3.4 per centimeter. And linear attenuation coefficient of soft tissue is given and that is equal to 0.89 per centimeter. The incident X-rays are parallel and have a uniform intensity I0 across the structure. Determine in terms of I0 intensity of the detected X-rays from point P. So first of all, we need to find out intensity of X-rays detected at this point. We need to understand when X-rays will pass through soft tissues, the intensity will decay exponentially. So we can simply draw here, the intensity will decay exponentially, somewhat like this. So initial intensity is I0 and intensity detected at this point, we can say this is I1. So we need to understand how I1 is linked with I0. So this is just exponential decay. We can say I is equal to I0 e to the power of negative mu x. In this case, I1, this is the transmitted intensity. So this one is transmitted intensity. So you need to understand these quantities. Transmitted intensity. I0, this one is incident intensity. So this is incident intensity. Mu is attenuation coefficient. So this is linear attenuation coefficient. And X is the thickness of tissues. So we can say this one is thickness. Now simply we need to plug in values and we can find out value of I1. So we can write down I1 means the transmitted intensity detected at this point. This one is equal to I1 and this one is equal to I0 e to the power of negative mu. We are talking about the soft tissue. So it is passing through the soft tissue. So this is given to us. This is soft tissue. So we have to use 0.89. So this is 0.89. We have to multiply this one with thickness and thickness is 5.6 centimeters and this is per centimeter so it means centimeter per centimeter they will be cancelled so we no need to write down centimeter here we simply need to solve this so in this case we can simply say i1 this one will be equal to if we solve this one we will get 0 0.0068 i naught. So this is value of I1. For the second part, we need to calculate intensity at point Q, means intensity of detected X-rays at this point. But in this case, X-rays will pass through soft tissue and they will also pass through bone. So we have two different media in this case. Let's try to understand this one in detail. Imagine that we have soft tissues so this is soft tissue and we have bone so the second medium is bone so this is bone we can also label this one we have soft tissue first of all x-rays will pass through soft tissue then they will pass through bone thickness of soft tissues we can simply find out that one will be equal to 5.6 minus 2.4 and this one will be equal to 3.2 centimeters and the thickness of bone is given to us x bone we can write down x bone is given that is equal to 2.4 
centimeters. Simply, you can read from here. We can say thickness of soft tissue is x1 and the thickness of bone, let's say this is x2. So the mu for soft tissues, we can say is mu1 and the mu for bone, let's say is mu2. Value of mu for soft tissues is given to us that is equal to 0.9 per centimeter. And value of mu for bone is also given that one is equal to 3.4 per centimeter. Now we have value of x, we have value of mu, so we can calculate intensities. In this case, it is also given to us the incident intensity is I0. Mean this here we have incident intensity. When x rays will pass through the soft tissues as value of mu is small, so they will decay slowly. So they will decay like this, decay slowly. But bone has high value of mu, so they will decay quickly, somewhat like this. So they will decay quickly. Imagine that at this point we have intensity I1 and Finally, we have intensity at point Q that is equal to I2. So we need to calculate I2. First of all, we can calculate I1. I1 will be equal to I0 e to the power of mu1 negative mu1 x1 because this is for soft tissue. Now we can calculate I2. So I2 will be equal to intensity at this point. So we have intensity I1 times e to the power of mu2 x2. This is for the bone. So I2 finally we can write down. I2 will be equal to I0. In I1 we can replace with this. So I1 is equal to I0 e to the power of negative mu1 x1. So we can write down e to the power of negative mu1 x1 and here we have e to the power of negative mu2 x2. Now simply we need to plug in values of mu1, mu2 and x1 and x2 and we can find out value of i2. So I will be writing here so i2 in this case is equal to i0 e to the power of mu1 that is equal to 0.89. We have to multiply this one with negative sign. Multiply by x1. x1 is 3.2. Now we have to multiply e to the power of negative mu2 and mu2 is 3.4 time thickness is 2.4. Now simply we need to solve this one. You can use calculator e to the power of minus and you can find out the value of i2. In this case value of i2 will be equal to 1.7 times 10 to negative 5 times i0. Simply in your calculator you have function E and here you have the X one and then you can find out value of this. Simply use this function and you have the power and you can find out the answer. If you will do this calculation, this one will be the final answer. So simply we can write down final answer is 1.7 times 10 to negative 5 and this is the final answer. This question has two marks. You will get the first mark if you have written this step. You will get one C mark and the second mark is the answer mark. If you have got the right answer you will get two marks this is for two media but if you need to write on this one for three medium let's say we have another medium here so i3 simply will be equal to i0 times e to the power of negative mu1 x1 e to the power of negative mu2 x2 e to the power of negative mu3 x3 so you can also find out value of i3 let's say i3 at this point so you can also find out i3 here for any number of media it doesn't matter same approach you can use for part c we need to explain with reference to our answers in b whether the x-ray image of the structure in figure 9.1 has good contrast in order to decide contrast is good or poor, we have to look at intensities. At point P, we have calculated intensity that was equal to 0 0.0068 times I0. We have also calculated intensity at point Q. Intensity at point Q was equal to 1.7 times 10 to negative 5 times I0. Now we can find out the ratio between IP and IQ. If we calculate this ratio, we can say 
IP divided by IQ. We can find out this ratio. IP is equal to 0 0.0068 times I0 divided by 1.7 times 10 to negative 5 times I0. If we simplify this one, I0, we can cancel with I0, we will get around 400. It simply means that IP is 400 times greater than IQ. So there is good contrast. So simply we can say in this case, IP is greater than IQ about 400 times, about 400 times. So simply you can say good contrast. You can also write down like this. You can say ratio between IP and IQ is equal to 400. So good contrast. So simply you can write down. So good contrast. Good contrast. It simply means that if you will look at point Q, less number of x-rays they can reach at this point. So this area will stay white. So this part of the screen will be white and this one will be dark because x-rays can reach here more x-rays can reach this part so you will see white and dark and there is a big difference between this part and this part so we will have good contrast it simply means that the white part and you have the dark part so this will give you the good contrast so if you look at this one this has very good contrast dark part is too dark and the white part is brighter so this has good contrast but if you look at this one this doesn't have very good contrast because this is also dark this is also dark so it is not very good contrast so this is how you can approach this question has only one mark if you have written these two points you will get one mark and that one is b mark